If you go back 44 years to 1980, J.D. Vance, you know the guy. We've endorsed J.P., right? J.D. Mandel. That guy. He is the first vice presidential running mate with net negative favorability. You've got to go back to 1980. J.D. Vance wasn't even alive at the time. So the starting point here for me with Vance was, all right, let's evaluate this election. Does Vance bring new voters to Trump? Does he expand the electorate for Trump in any way? Doesn't seem like it at all. Doesn't seem like I mean, listen, Trump's going to win Ohio almost certainly. Ohio's not really been in play for Democrats for a while now. So maybe he makes uh, Trump win by a slightly larger margin in Ohio. And that's a maybe. But Vance doesn't help Trump in Arizona. Vance doesn't help help Trump in you know, North Carolina to the extent that maybe you could pull that off. So the point here is it doesn't seem Vance brings Trump anything. We're now realizing that Vance may actually be detrimental to Donald Trump. He may actually be a net loss of votes for Trump. And the new favorability numbers propose exactly that. CNN political analyst did a segment where he said, I don't understand the pick, neither do American voters. He breaks down J.D. or J.P.'s popularity ratings and uh, the average VP popularity since the, the year 2000 is plus 19. Now, the way you get that is you say favorable minus unfavorable. And on average, favorable is 19 points ahead of unfavorable. J.D. is underwater. He is a minus six. The percentage of the country that sees him unfavorably exceeds that which sees him favorably by six percentage points. Harry Enton says J.D. Vance is making history the wrong way. You know, one of the problems with these smug pricks is they don't realize that they're coming off like smug pricks very transparently and people don't like them. And that sort of seems to be what's going on here. Here's a funny little just a short clip of an interview that CNN did with a uh, Pennsylvania voter who is not thrilled with the selection of J.D. Vance. How do you feel about uh, Trump's VP pick, J.D. Vance? He's kind of like uh, a little loud and obnoxious. Yes, he and settled down a bit. Yeah, loud and obnoxious. That may be, maybe. So there's a few different reasons that we like this. If we are against Trump getting four more years as president, the reason number one that Vance being unpopular is good is that maybe it hurts Trump. Second reason that J.D. Vance being unpopular is good. It will anger Trump as reportedly he was about to select Doug Burgum, Governor Doug Burgum, to be his running mate. And th these are reports, right? They are they true? We're not sure, but it is being pretty widely reported that Trump was about to select Doug Burgum to be his running mate, who might not add to the campaign, but would not detract in the way that J.D. Vance seems to actively be detracting. And a combination of Don Jr. and or Eric Trump convinced their dad absolutely do not go with Doug Burgum, go with J.D. Vance. And if that is the way that it ended up that way, uh, Trump presumably would be maybe mad at his kids. But more importantly, sees the headlines, sees the unfavorability, sees J.D. Vance completely fail at every campaign event. Um, and this will trigger him and send him down an even more extreme downward spiral, which could then have the follow on kind of signal boosting vicious circle effect of hurting the campaign even even more. So I'm quite pleased with the selection of J.D. Vance from the standpoint of hurting Trump. And it seems the polling is going the exact same way. One of today's sponsors is a book called Aim for the Uprights by Stu Crum, a former professional football player, now entrepreneur and successful business leader, including being former president of Bridgestone Tire and Jiffy Lube. He calls his new book Aim for the Uprights a playbook for achieving your professional and personal aspirations through intentional living. I've been talking a lot about intentionality lately. If you've tried getting up extra early, following the right personal finance practices, and yet you're still working marathon hours, depriving your family of your time day to day, missing vacations. This could be a great book for you. Aim for the Uprights proves that you can regain control of your time and career through simple choices and consistency and a zeal for trusting that small steps will get you there. It's really an instructional playbook 
for men and women looking to balance their lives written by a C-suite executive with some unique insights about how to make more time for your family, friends and what's important without sacrificing your career. It's a book that speaks to the reader rather than just throwing a bunch of stuff at the reader. Pick up your copy of Stu Crumb's Aim for the Uprights today at davidpackman.com slash aim. The link is in the description.